اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا و طبیب نفوسنا و حبیب قلوبنا ابی القاسم محمد صلی اللہ علیہ و آلہ و سلم لا سیما بقیت الله روحی و ارواح العالمین لمقدمه الفداء Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadi alawla an hadana Allah. By the grace of God, we have one more opportunity uh, during these holy months of Ramadan with the assistance of Sister Rebecca from Oslan Interpretation. to introduce you tonight especially especially my dear brothers and sisters i need your kind attention because tonight i have something very special to share with you see when we hear about the holy months of ramadan automatically everyone muslims and even non-muslims who are familiar with uh, ramadan everyone thinks about fasting fasting uh, constitutes only half of the Uh, months of Ramadan constitutes only the day activities of the months of Ramadan where we voluntarily refrain from certain things such as eating and drinking. In other words, fasting is by and large more of the day activities. But what about the nights of the months of Ramadan? The assumption is that well, we fast during the day. Unfortunately for some people, the nights of Ramadan uh, are the nights of feasting, fun and, and relax and, and anything. On the contrary, the month of Ramadan is holy not just because of its days, it's holy because of its nights as well. If I may dare say that the nights of the month of Ramadan are holier than the days of the month of Ramadan. The proof of that is that there is one night in that month of Ramadan, miraculously deliberately the Almighty God has kept it hidden between you know, two, three nights or even perhaps more than that. And that night he introduces it to us as a blessed night. Inshallah, we'll talk about uh, that night next week. And that night in value is worth more than over 1,000 months. One night is worth more than 1,000 nights. So please make sure that you don't let the nights of Ramadan go in waste. Make sure that the nights of Ramadan are not for feasting. The nights of Ramadan, in fact, are golden opportunity for supplication. Right from the time that you break your fast, take advantage of any opportunity and spend some time, the more the merrier, to communicate with the divine. Remember, in this series, we've been exploring the means of communicate or the means of nearness to God, huh? Tonight, I'm introducing to you the, the, the shortcut, the, the nearest means, the strongest means, the means that once you experience it as if you are going to accept anything and anyone else, the direct means of communication with God that is called supplication, invocation. And the months, especially the nights of the months of Ramadan, are so rich with that. because of the numbers of supplications that we have amazingly in this month narrated the, for us, to us, uh, from the Imams of Ahlul Bayt al Musalam. Brothers and sisters, communication with God doesn't need any protocol. There is no restriction that you need to be with wudu, although it's a virtue. There is no restriction that you need to be facing the qibla, although it's a virtue. There is no restriction that you need to read it from the books of du'a. You can open up to God and talk to him as you wish. However, unfortunately, because of lack of communication, we don't know much what to talk to God about. And therefore, we are so blessed to have access to the words of Ma'asumin, the Imams of Ma'asumin, alayhi salam. One of the renowned Muslim philosophers and astronomers, He was a genius person. His name is Khaji Nasiruddin Tusi. He says that there are two types of miracles. One is the a miracle of action that is more useful and impressing to the general public. 
to the layman and, and, and common people. But there is another type of miracle that is for the elite, is for the intellectuals. And then he says that this type of miracle is called the uh, verbal miracle, the miracle of a speech, verbal and the miracle of a speech. The Holy Quran, our Holy Scripture, is of this type. The words of wisdom that it contains. And then I will tell you, I'm quoting Khaja Nasir, and I tell you that if anyone wants to prove the authenticity of the Imams of Ahlul Bayt al Musalam, introduce them to uh, the, the supplications of the Imam. Tell them that, look, this is Dua Kumail of Imam Ali. This is Dua Abu Hamza al Thumali of Imam Zainul Abidin This is Dua Joshan al Kabir of the Holy Prophet of Islam. Can you f imagine that a human, an ordinary human, a scholar, a high caliber scholar can ever produce this? Amazingly, amazingly. So these are the living miracles. For those who know Arabic, good on, good on you. Enjoy the text, enjoy the melody, enjoy the context, enjoy the eloquence of these supplications during the night, and talk to God, to God in the words of Masumin Alemusalam. For those who unfortunately have not learned Arabic yet, inshallah you endeavor to learn, still the opportunity is there. My suggestion is that listen to the dua and read the translation. The translation speaks for itself. And especially once you read it every night, you bring it to your diet, spiritual nightly uh, diet as I refer to it, and then you relate to the dua, you will feel different. Let me give you, um, uh, share with you a memory. Some years ago, I was running a course on the spirituality of Islam in the Catholic Academy in the city. In one of the sessions, I had num a cop enough copies of English translation of the Akumel distributed it to the audience. And my audience, they were all priests and chaplains of, uh, uh, of Catholic Academy, obviously. And I spoke about supplication from Islamic point of view, invocation to God, direct communication to God. And I told them that this is one of the famous supplications from one of our saints known as Imam Ali alayhi salam. As I was reading, going through some paragraphs uh, of the dua in, in the session, after the program finished, they came to me, many of the gents and the ladies, can I keep a copy of it? They said, we love it. We like to, to say it as well. And when you read the Akumel, there is no such things. That it's, you know, there are certain supplications that only Shia relate to it. Only Muslims relate to it. But when the Akumel, subhanAllah, is something that everyone can relate to it. This is the miracle, the miracle of, of Ahlul Bayt al Muslim. So enjoy the nights of the months of Ramadan with all these rich, rich supplications available to you to communicate with, with God. From tomorrow night, the night of 13, 14, and the night of 15th of the month of Ramadan, there is a special supplication known as Dua Mujir. Enjoy reading that Dua. Consists of 88 paragraphs. And really, it, it's just impossible for an ordinary human to have come up with this and such supplications. Think of the Joshan Kabir that consists of 1,000 divine names. Amazingly, impossible for any human to have come up with this. That's why we say that Quran is the word of God descended to us. Dua of Ahlul Bayt supplication is the word of God in that the, the, the Imam has been inspired by the Almighty God and verbalized it, and by the grace of God, we have access to it. Another amazing benefit of direct communication with God is with refers to those who are seeking God, looking for God. I mentioned this because a couple of before the month was before the month of Ramadan, a young lady contacted me and she goes, Sheikh Mansur. I'm contemplating about God. I'm reading so much materials. Atheists versus theists. Each have their own scientific, philosophical uh, proofs. I'm a little bit confused. I cannot say that I don't believe in God at all. I, I categorically, I can say I'm an atheist completely. And I cannot say I'm a theist and I'm a believer in God. Somehow I'm on the fence. Is there... Do you have any suggestion for me? Someone introduce you to me and 
I said to her that, look, I'm just making up the name, obviously, for obvious reasons. Sally, I said, Sally, why don't you ask God? Either in reality, in truth, either there is a God out there or there isn't. If there is, surely that God is omniscient. Omniscient means all-knowing, omnipotent, almighty, uh, all, uh, omnibenevolent, all-caring. He would love and care about you more than your mom does. Okay? So just talk to him. Directly open up and talk to him. God, are you there? If you are truly there, I genuinely, sincerely, without any agenda, sincerely as the one who is in quest of truth, I want to get to know you, God. Introduce yourself to me. Show yourself to me. Of course, not physically. Introduce yourself to me. Rest assured. And make sure that you keep saying it because you, we have to prove our, our, our sincerity for impossible. If there is any, I said to her that, look, I'm not saying if there is any God or not. I leave it to you to discover. Experience God. What are you going to lose? You are not losing anything. Just experience God for yourself. My dear, communication, supplication, invocation has this power of direct knowledge to God, experimental knowledge to God. And once you experience that, and by the grace of God, I'm sure you will, as millions of people in the past they did. As a matter of fact, without asking, often he introduces himself to us, let alone when we ask. And once you experience that, you don't care about any philosophical proofs or disproofs. You say, hey, I have experienced him. I know what are you talking about. It's just like you think of a friend that before you didn't know him. But once you open the communication, the more you communicate, the more you interact, the more you're getting to know each other. The question is, I said to her that, how much how or little have you ever communicated with God? It's obvious, if you had no communication with anyone, how are you supposed to know him or her? Open the communication, keep the communication, stay tuned, and you are going to experience God for yourself. And then you are going to say this part of Dua Abu Hamza Tistamali, like Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam, Bika araftuk, wa anta dalaltani alayk. Oh God, I got to know you by you, through you. You introduce himself to me, and how beautiful. I usually give this example. Quran says, Allah In truth, God is like the light for the heavens and the earth. Metaphorically, look, if you want to get to know the objects of this room, the question is that are you going to turn the light on to know the objects around? Or through the objects you get to know the light? It's a common sense. You flip the, uh, the switch, turn the light on, so that you can get and you can see the objects. Objects are all in dark, in darkness. It is through God that we're supposed to get to know the heaven, the earth, myself, trees, and everything around us. The mistake that we make often, and that's why you see all these philosophical debates and questions, ongoing debates, is because, hey, you are going the wrong way. Make a U-turn. You try to prove God through his creation, that's a long way. There's a shortcut. The shortcut is from within yourself. God says, just open the communication with me. Just talk to me. Just get to know me directly, directly. And the dua has this power of getting to know God. And then you become like a baby. Rumi, the famous Iranian mystic, he says that, have you ever seen a baby asking the lady, lady, prove that you are my mom, otherwise I'm not going to suck the, the milk. No, the baby smells, the baby knows she's my mom. And uh, because he or she is hungry, thirsty, uh, enjoys the milk of he, he, his or her mother. You open the communication directly with God and then you don't require any proof because the proof will be within you. You say that, come on, I've experienced God. I don't need any philosophical proof. Another point, my time is, uh, is running short. Another thing that we need to know and keep in mind when we are supplicating 
for one another and it's very effective in fact there is so much about dua and supplication I wish I had enough time to to elaborate on it I'm just introducing it to you you go and discover you go and experience it yourself as I told you that the nights of the months of Ramadan are so rich please enjoy them enjoy these dua and supplications of the months of Ramadan but when we pray see supplication so far as there are in any action in any action they, there as long as there are element of selfishness in it I will not be elevated spiritually and the more selfless you and I become the lighter spiritually the more we ascend spiritually we call it it's more humane isn't it the more you care about others the more you share your your wealth or whatever God has bestowed upon you with others the more you care and share the more selfless you are isn't it and we are talking about the means of nearness to God yes supplication invocation communi direct in communication with God is a very strong means of communication with God but even that even that if you want to be more elevated when you raise your hands when you open your mouth when you communicate with God to pray give priority to others this is called dua zahr al ghaib pray for others Fatima to Zahra sallallahu alayha she was standing on her feet the whole night praying Imam Hassan Mushtaba alayhi salam uh, he says I ask mom you always ask for the neighbors for others what about us and Fatima goes Al-Jar Thummaddar, my dear son, first let's talk for others. Imam Al-Baqir alayhi salam with reference to an ayah in Surah Al-Shura where the Almighty God says, وَيَسْتَجِيبُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَيَزِيدُهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ The Almighty God answers the invocation, the call of those who believe and do righteous good deeds and increases for them from his bounty. The mom says that this ayah is with reference to those who give preference even when they raise their hands, first they pray for others. And amazingly, when I pray for you, when you pray for me, there's more chance for that dua to be granted. Why? Because I become more selfish. You become more selfish. And remember the code, the, the rule that we said, the less selfish we are, the more selfless we are, the, the more spiritually will be elevated. And the more you are elevated, there is more chances, the stronger the Wi-Fi, the stronger the connection and the communication, and therefore the more chance for it to be granted. Not only that, and the Imam al-Baqir alayhi salam says, and Quran says, وَيَزِيدُهُمْ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ God says, and rest assured that yes, you prayed for someone, but God uh, answers your inner call as well. At the end of the day, I have my own needs as well, inevitably. You have your own needs as well. God says that you talk for each other, you pray for each other. I know what your needs are. I will grant your needs even more than when you would utter it and you would sing it as well. I mentioned this and I pray here, lest I forget the opportunity just before I come to this session. A sister requested to remember her her mother may the Almighty God grant her needs and the needs of her mother whatever that they need between them and the Almighty God inshallah we always pray for each other and remember each other allow me to conclude remember what I mentioned in the beginning I want to come back to it I mentioned that the month of Ramadan is not just about fasting during the days the month of Ramadan is also about communication, invocation, supplication at night as well. Proof of that is that in the proof of that in the Quran, in the Quran, in Surah Al-Baqarah, the second chapter of the Quran, in the series of ayat that the Almighty God speaks about the month of Ramadan, the second last ayah is a unique ayah in the Quran, unique in its style. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is passing a message. Allahu Akbar. He's giving an invitation to you and I and everyone who would love to attend this divine banquet of a spiritual and direct communication with God. 
I read the ayah and I translate it. I wish I had time in that ayah in its, itself needs a separate time to elaborate and explain, to see how intimately God talks to each and every one of us. So intimate, like a dad, like a mom is talking to their children, son, my son, my daughter, my dear, so compassionately God is talking to us here. He says, I've been waiting for you. Where are you? Open the communication. From my end, the communication has been always on, says the Almighty God. You just need to turn on your mobile, your receiver. Turn on your receiver and you will see that the waves of communication are already there. The reason that you couldn't find me so far because, my dear, your receiver was switched off. Switch on your receiver, you see that I'm nearer to you than your jugular vein. This is the power of dua and supplication. Here is the ayah. Ayah 186, Surah Al-Baqarah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Wa'idha sa'alaka ibadi anni fa'inni qareeb ujibu da'wata da'i idha da'an falyastajibu li wal yu'minu bi la'allahum yarshudun. Quick translation reads, Wa'idha sa'alaka ibadi anni when my devotees those who devoted themselves, those who sincerely are looking for me, are in quest of truth with capital T. When they ask you, the Holy Prophet, concerning me, tell them, I am near. One of the names of God is Qareeb. I am near, as I told, near, nearer to you than your jugular vein. You just need to turn on the receiver. Ojibu da'wat ad-da'a. I answer the call of the caller. Anyone who calls me, believer or disbeliever, disbeliever who wants to know me, believer who wants to continue the communication, I answer the call of the caller. When he calls me, when you come to me, God says, when you directly communicate with me, then Ask me to grant you. Don't worry about the rest. I am the Almighty. I am the All-Knowing, All-Hearing, All-Seeing. Ask me to grant you. Well, you may not be, but you need to believe me. You need to believe in me, not without. Believe that you are communicating with the All-Knowing, All-Hearing, Almighty. Well, you may not be. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ That they may be guided. You want guidance? Communicate with me directly. In this ayah, exception, that's what I told you that is unique, exceptionally the Almighty God seven times uses the, the first pronoun referring to himself as I. I talk to you. Not he. Meaning that God says, don't think that I'm absent, I'm present. It's a direct communication. And therefore God says, I am near to you. My name is in fact even near. Let's open the, my, I am already there for you. You just need to open the and turn on the receiver and then the communication will be on. May the Almighty God bless us all to enjoy the blessings of the heavenly supplications that Alhamdulillah have come to us from the heritage of Ahlul Bayt al -Musalam. and may the Almighty God grant all our needs, all our supplications and invocations بحق محمد و آل محمد صلوا على محمد و آل محمد بعلا أصواتكم اللهم صل على محمد و آل محمد